away with our usual protocol here, which is very informal, but uh, um, good morning, everyone. It is morning for all of us. Good morning, teacher. <laughs> yeah, good morning. yeah, I'm Luther Kruger, uh, Big Blue Sun Museum of Solar Cooking, uh, based in right now rainy Minneapolis, though we've had four days of sun and uh, always up for talking about solar cooking. And uh, I'm so glad to have uh, Lorraine Anderson uh, join us today. Uh, we met in 2020 on the, that first road trip that I took to do videos. And by the time I got to uh, Lorraine, I knew I was on the right track. I think you were number three or four of my visits. And uh, I just knew, wait, I might have visited you last before I picked up the villager in, uh, yeah. I think it was, it was toward the end. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. After the Barkers, uh, further inland, <laughs> uh, almost not quite snowbound uh, part of Oregon at the time, October, I think it was. But uh, we had a great conversation. It's so good to talk to someone who's walking the talk as far as trying to figure out how to promote solar cooking in any way, shape possible and playing to one's strengths. Uh, uh, Lorraine has written a, a ton of uh, books, uh, articles, uh, has worked in e ecological issues for how long, you know, and uh, that first book, Cooking with Sunshine, uh, that was one of the first I got for my solar cooking library. Uh, it's been around forever. It's great. Uh, and when we talked, that was three, almost three years ago, almost, yeah, three years ago. Uh, you were already talking about this book, which is so exciting to hear about, to really try to make solar cooking mainstream. Um, I, I'm just so excited about it. And uh, I have I have some questions I've written down. This is informal, but, uh, you know, you had that first cookbook. It was great. What motivated you to do this one? Uh, I think people hearing your story about this will be uh, excited to know. Oh, well, that's a great question to start with. And thank you so much, Luther, for organizing this. I know it's a ton of work, but it's certainly a, a wonderful gift to network people. Um, so I um, read the reviews of Cooking with Sunshine on Amazon, and um, there were a few consistent criticisms which were very fair. And one was that um, some of the dishes needed some foods to be sauteed before they were put in the solar oven. So they needed to be sauteed on the stovetop indoors. And some of them used um, cream of mushroom soup and, and such. And there was actually one recipe where we had people put a can of beans in a black sock. And so <laughs> there, were, there were comments about that. Um, and I thought, fair enough. And, you know, I, it made me realize that back in those days, we were so astonished that you could cook anything with sunshine, that we weren't very discerning about what we cooked. <laughs> and so, so I thought, well, there's a lot of room for improvement there, for sure. So, um, oh, and the second thing that motivated me was, yes, as um, Luther mentioned, I've been an, an editor for 40 years. And um, in recent decades, really focusing on the environment. And I've done a few really deep dives into climate change information. And um, it just convinced me um, that solar cooking is amazing because it happens at the intersection of a couple of systems that really need to change. And that's the food system and the energy system. So um, solar cooking is really a place where an individual can make a difference. And, uh, you know, we have choice, we have power. So I thought, well, I want to kind of play up that aspect of it. <clears throat> um, and, and the third thing is that I um, really have become aware that solar cooking is the best kept culinary secret in America. And I have very recent evidence for that. Um, just this week, the Washington Post does a short um, series called Eco Kitchen. So Eco Kitchen. This week, their um, topic was get rid of your energy vampires in the kitchen. So, and the woman who wrote it, Priyanka Nayak, she's from India and she did not mention solar cooking as an alternative to um, stop using energy in your kitchen. So I wrote an email to her and um, it's, it's just proof that um, 
solar cooking uptake has really, really lagged in the United States. And I'm not happy about that. And I would like to change that. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that really got, got me going. Sure. Uh, uh, and I appreciate that you uh, you read reviews. Uh, I'm a writer myself and I, I don't, I've not been published worth talking about, but uh, I know of people that have and some it's like, I don't want to read them because I don't want to get you know depressed. But you're taking the approach that Dave Chalker has taken, you know, Dave Chalker with the ugly solar cooker. It used to be the, oh, it was the Tulsi and uh, I think Sun Cook was it maybe called uh, the hybrid uh, solar cooker. And uh, he told me when I sat down with him, when I get an email complaining about something, uh, I got I call the person. He f gets their phone number and talks to them in person. Because he said, if that, you know, this one person complains, there's 10 people that are silent and fume about it. And uh, he says, they have a point. If they don't like it, there's a reason. And it may be a small reason, maybe a big one. And uh, so he follows through with it. And uh, you followed through in a big way here. Uh, to almost uh, spring you to another order of magnitude, uh, which I appreciate. Um, the, well, so why do you think it's so uh, solar cooking is underappreciated in the U.S.? Is it just because people are ignorant of it? I mean, I, I was at the state fair this last fall and people passed by the son of an villager, which they were impressed with. But they see the cookers on the ground, the regular sized ones. And they say, well, that'd be good for camping. Or we did something in 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 scouts. Yeah. So it's not I don't I don't think everyone's totally ignorant of it, but. Anyway, what's what's your take on that? Why is it so underappreciated here? Well, yeah, I think you're right. Um, I think that it has an image problem. And I think in people's minds, they associate it with refugee camps in Africa, survivalists in the US with guns, um, also with a Boy Scout and Girl Scout summer projects or high school science class projects or they think, oh, it's good for an emergency or for camping. So, um, and they don't see their neighbors using them. So they're not, they don't think of them as normal and they don't see a place for them in their lives. Um, I think there are a couple other factors that are huge. One is that America is a fast food nation. There's a book by that name. And um, mm -hmm. That means that people are not used to planning ahead. They have certain habits that need to be overcome. And um, there is a slow food movement in the world. I've been reading Alice Waters, We Are What We Eat. She's uh, associated with the slow food movement. I'm a member of Slow Food Corvallis. But slow is not considered beautiful in this country. Um, also, recently I was talking with Mary Frank, our wonderful activist uh, artist activist for for solar cookers and she said people are always saying to her but it's so slow so that's definitely an impediment um and so um yeah my way of addressing that is to think well people love their slow cookers you just have to um let them know that this is an extension of their slow cooker and and they know how to how to work with that now, the, the third thing is that Americans love their grills. <laughs> Fire up the grill and invite everyone. So I'm going to paste this in a collage and put a solar cooker next to it and say, well, you would spend $250 for this grill. Well, how about spending $250 for a hot pot? And then you don't have to go to the store with your propane tanks and pay for fuel ever again. So there's that. So that's, and that's huge. So I found these statistics online. In, uh, at the end of 2020, there were estimated 100 million grills in homes in the United States. And that was about 60% of US households. And about a third of those households owned two or more grills. So there you go. <laughs> oh, and I can tell you that uh, my next door neighbors they probably grill about the average number of times that anyone else I know grills, which is about six or eight times a year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, we're, and we're in the variety weather belt where we don't know when we're going to get sun, but we get sun more than six or eight times a year <laughs> where it's a full day and we can cook whole meals. Uh, so, uh, so I think you're right there. And I know that uh, one fellow I talked to, he said, he thinks people 
just don't get it because people just don't cook anymore. I mean, just uh, the fast food nation part is it. It's like, well, let's get a, They think they're cooking when they're actually heating stuff up in the microwave. And we know that is not cooking. So, uh, well, what, what will it take to, to change that? Well, um, I think that it it is going to change. Like everything is going to change either by our choice or because we're forced to. Um, and I'd rather choose. Right. So I think um, the first thing that's going to change it is that Americans are rethinking their use of fossil fuels because climate change is more and more in our, in our faces. We can't deny it anymore. And obviously, um, we have to stop lighting things on fire, as my climate hero, um, Bill McKibben, says. So I think that's going to become more and more apparent. Um, uh, hotter summers. We're going to have really hot summers and people are going to be asking more and more, how can I avoid having to turn on my oven when it's 90, 100, 110 degrees outside? Um, and the second thing is that I think that the technology has evolved to the point where um, it's ready to go mainstream because you can you can order a cooker on Amazon. You can get um, one that, an all season camper solar cooker um, from Jim Lejoie. You can get one of Roger Haynes's um, sun up solar cookers on Amazon. And Walmart actually is carrying evacuated tube solar cookers now. If you look Walmart online. And um, the third thing that's going to change it, which I hope to contribute to, is there has to be a cookbook that that um, appeals to the mainstream. And so that's what I aimed for with my cookbook. So I yeah. hope that that will kickstart things. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, you look at those books and you say, that's I want that on my shelf. I want that in the kitchen. Uh, I want to learn more about that. It's just uh, very attractive. And uh, I think you've, I think you've actually s totally scored with yours. I mean, I've seen, I've seen the photos are, are just gorgeous. I mean, you, you, we say it, we salivate when we see photos that good about food. Um, so uh, you've kind of a, uh, touched on who you've written it for. Uh, uh, what, what's the largest audience possible you can imagine for it? Well, so I sort of think that there's, um, I would say five different segments. And one is people who are, are already solar cooking enthusiasts and are looking for new recipes. And I think that's a pretty reliable core group. Um, a second, I'm hoping to capture the attention of um, people who love to cook with crock pots. And that's why I titled the book Slow Cook Solar. So that when you Google or on Amazon, you're searching on slow cooking, you'll come up with this book and then you'll think, oh, slow cooking, I know how to do that. Um, so that's a huge group of people. Um, I also um, want to appeal to people who love to cook outdoors, and those are people with grills. The, you know, the great thing about that segment of the population is they do love to cook outdoors in the summer. So my approach is, if you can't beat them, join them. And so I'm saying, look, um, think about having a solar cooker next to your grill, and then you can cook um, a blueberry crumble to go with your grilled whatever, or you can um, bake potatoes for your potato salad to go with whatever. I, I sort of got onto this because I sent cookers to both of my nieces who are 40, 40 something now, and they both, um, well, one cooked some potato, they both cooked potatoes. That was the first thing they did. And one said they went great with the grilled onions that she made. So I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> So that's that's a segment of people I really want to capture. Um, another segment is gardeners, and um, you know people who grow their own food. And uh, there's a wonderful gardener in South Central LA who I'm onto named Ron Finley. Ron Finley. He's known as the gangsta gardener, and he's uh, trying to get people in food deserts to realize that his his slogan is "Growing your own food is like printing your own money." Oh. Well, that's I think Cook, and then growing your own food and cooking it with sunshine is like printing even more of your own money. So um, I hope to appeal to those folks. And last year at this time, I did a presentation to the Master Gardeners Group in Salem, Oregon. And um, I, I plan to do more of that kind of outreach to gardening groups. Um, and the fourth group is everyone who's concerned about climate change. 
Um, and I have to say in my own circle of friends, um, almost everyone I know is concerned about climate change. Um, but, and they think that it's quaint that I cook with sunshine. And I'm trying to say to them, if you want to walk your talk, really start cooking with sunshine. It's, it's a small thing, but it's something that each of us can choose to do. So, um, so I, I'm trying to appeal to that group and say, this is a way to walk your talk even more than you already are. You can go to protests and cut up your credit bank, bank credit card, which I did. I went to that protest with the third act a couple of weeks ago, stood in front of Bank of America and cut up my credit card because they're financing the, um, uh, the expansion of fossil fuel infrastructure. So you can do that. And then when you come home, if the sun's out, if you're cooking with sunshine, you're you're walking your talk even more. So those are the groups that I I hope to address. Well, that that's great because uh, and uh, mirroring that, uh, I have a friend who is a, a neighbor of ours. She moved to another neighborhood, but she runs Minneapolis Climate Action. And uh, my one small way to contribute is uh, whenever they have a fundraising event, uh, I get a a Hanes uh, cookup for for uh, a door prize. Oh, nice. and, uh, yeah, and it's it's so nice to see when people and there even there these are uh, as you say these are climate action folks who they maybe vaguely are aware of it but then they, when they see it and it's it's glimmering you know and this is like towards sunset I make sure it's close to a window to grab a little bit of the sunlight or even cloud like light you know makes it shine and so forth um, so tying it in with that I, I agree I think that's one of the best ways uh, uh, I. Me too. Just about every neighbor I know uh, understands the implications of, of what's going on out there. And that's one way to, to address it. Um, one question I had, and this I, I partly know this from our conversation three years ago, uh, mm -hmm. how you developed recipes uh, for the book. It's um, it's from what I gather, it's no different from back then, because you actually cook the recipes in the solar cookers. You don't you don't do any shortcuts, right? Oh, right. Yeah, so this book um, has been under development for eight years. So I've tested uh, many of the recipes multiple times and every one at least once. But um, what I did was I, I sort of set about to find some recipes that appeal to foodies. I mean, I, I think of myself as a foodie, meaning I like delicious food. Um, I like fresh flavors and interesting combinations. So I went um, searching everywhere. You should have seen me some, <clears throat> some nights I'd be in my easy chair with a stack of cookbooks this tall, you know, I'd go to the library and get all these cookbooks and I would find interesting recipes and, um, I would sort of deconstruct them and reverse engineer them to, to be, um, doable in a solar cooker. Um, one, I, one of, of my favorite recipes is, um, Mexican chocolate pudding, which is a recipe that I found um, in the New York Times cooking section by Mark Bittman. And I took it apart and it's much easier to do in a solar cooker. He has several steps that you do on the stovetop, um, melt the chocolate chips and then boil the water with the sugar and all this stuff. So I figured out that you can just really easily throw in the water and the sugar and the chocolate chips into the solar cooker and let it melt for an hour or so. And then you, you come in and you um, blend it with tofu. It's got tofu in it. It's the most delicious pudding. So um, <clears throat> I looked for for uh, recipes in the New York Times and another author I followed there um, who specializes in slow cooking and, and crock pot cooking is Sarah D. Gregorio. And I have her book, Adventures in Slow Cooking. And um, about four of the recipes in Slow Cook Solar are adapted from there. Of course, giving her credit for that. and I. I plan to get in touch with her and and say, Sarah, maybe you could start writing some recipes for solar cookers in the New York Times cooking section. Um, so uh, I and I wanted to focus on things that the solar cooker does well, which it it lo um, slowly cooks vegetables to to taste the best that you're ever going to taste. Right? We we know that all of us on this call know that. So. Um, I have a section on chilled veggie soups because it's a great uh, way to get your vegetables um, cook. Yeah, and I and I found soups that are really tasty. They're really delicious, and some interesting combinations like pear 
and butternut squash soup. Um, I made up a shakshuka tomato soup, which is based on shakshuka is a is a dish that uses Tunisian spices and um, usually it's not a soup, it's just more like a stew. So I made that into a soup because there's lots of tomatoes in the garden toward the end of the summer that we need to use, right? So, um, and I used, at first I was only using, I have my cook kit. I used my cook kit um, for decades. And then I finally bought a Solivore Sport when they were available. And I'm so sad they're not available anymore because that's a great cooker. And then in 2018, I went down to San Diego to visit my sister. And um, I, I saw something that Sharon had, had posted about um, a class on solar cooking. So I got in touch with her and she said, why don't you come meet the solar cooking inventors? So wonderful Sharon, she had us at her house. She had me and Roger Haynes and Jim Lajoie to her house and they showed me their cookers and every, they, those three gave me their cookers. So I came home with their cookers and started testing with those cookers too. So by the end, I had an array of about five cookers that I was <laughs> testing things in. Um, yeah, so I, um, some of the dishes I tested so many times, I'm sort of sick of them, but I wanted to get it right. There's a, there's a pasta dish. It's um, ZT baked with three cheeses and fresh herbs. I had to do that thing about 20 times to get the proportion of, of liquid and um, pasta right, but I was determined that I was gonna do that. At one point, I threw it out, and then I saw a recipe that gave me another idea. So I tried it again, and, and I nailed it. So, um, I yeah, we, we had a fun time. My partner, Phil, Phil Liu, took the photographs, and um, we joked that I would prepare this dinner, and it would be out there looking beautiful, and and we would be starving and really wanting to sit down and eat. But I would say, Phil, could you take a photograph first before we sit down to eat? So he uh, was a great asset on this adventure. The, uh, so the, the book, now you have timed it for um, Earth Day publication, right? And people can order it now. It can, uh, can you reveal any of its inner inner secrets and <laughs> give us a, give us a little tour maybe <laughs> sure yeah um so here's the cover which is beautiful oh, okay. so yeah. um yeah i um i found a wonderful designer in portland ash good who designed the book to make it beautiful um in the subtitle i want to point out that it says sun-baked summer meals good for people and planet so I, and I put summer in the subtitle because I know there are a lot of people around the country who can cook for many more months than the summer. I live in Oregon. So for me, it's pretty much a summer thing. And I want people in the Northern tier like Minneapolis, Seattle, Boston, New York. Um, I think aiming for summer is, is reasonable and it's a good um, starting place for people who are unfamiliar with it. So um, yeah, so then, <laughs> Yeah, it's beautiful. There are food photos. Food photos are important. And also, in the beginning, I'm emphasizing the the um, virtues of slowness. So I'll read you this quote that's in the beginning. Slower, it turns out, often means better. Better health, better work, better business, better family life, better exercise, better cuisine. And that's from Carl Honoré's book, In Praise of Slow. <laughs> so then um, the contents page oh, yeah. again, emphasizing fresh ingredients from the garden or farmer's market. Um, okay, so there's a section called Your Solar Powered Slow Cooker that, um, that names some of my favorite cookers and how people can get them and and helps people think about well which cooker might be right for me um i mentioned i have a, a section called ingredients for a healthy plate where i talk about the fact that um according to the eat lancet commission a diet rich in plant-based foods and with fewer animal source foods 
confers both improved health and environmental benefits. So again, uh, drawing attention to the intersection of the food system and the energy system. Um, and then I have, because Bob Metcalf is here, food safety, a whole sidebar about food safety and assuring people that it's okay, that everything's gonna be fine. Because I think, you know, the, the things that I've seen online from novices, um, there's foremost a concern about food safety. Is this, could this really be safe? So um, then there are sections on pestos, spreads and breads, chilled veggie soups, substantial salads. So those are a, a ton of salads where you cook ingredients like lentils or um, sweet potatoes or rice. There's a brown rice salad, um, buckwheat, all the, all the different grains. There's one called bountiful bowls because bowls have become really popular and I love bowls. You, your whole meal is in one bowl, quiches and casseroles and sun-baked sweets. And um, one of my favorite recipes is the black bean brownies. <laughs> Don't even need a dark pan for those. Okay, and then, so in the back, because there are different, um, people have different preferences about how to cook. Some people I know say, well, just tell me how to cook the basic ingredients and, and I'll, put them together. Uh, and so I have this chapter in the back called basics and bonus recipes. And it just tells it goes down through all the different food types and how you cook them. Um, how do you cook vegetables above ground and uh, below ground vegetables? How do you cook grains and fruit? Um, how do you cook bread? Um, so and then in the back, there's some resources like I mentioned solar cookers international and um, the solar cookers at Cantina West, solar cooker at Cantina West site, which as we discussed earlier, Luther um, is not active. Nathan Perry isn't maintaining it anymore, but it's still a huge archive of information. And then we have the mascot. <laughs> for cooking. The the garden, the garden. And her motto is relax, dinner's in the solar cooker. <laughs> Well, a couple a couple reflections. Uh, you mentioned slow. Uh, one of my interviews uh, in Kentucky with uh, Andy McDonald and uh, Mark Schimmler. Uh, Mark wrote he he wrote a book uh, called Slow Spoke, where he unicycled from his home in Kentucky all the way to I think Utah, unicycled on a unicycle, mind you, uh, and uh, and it was all a, a meditation on what's the hurry? <laughs> you know, he, if he could do 10 miles, 20 miles a day, that would be like booking it, you know, on a, on a <laughs> unicycle. Uh, it was, it was a wonderful book. Yeah. Well, and so you do really cook everything outdoors in the, in these solar cookers. Uh, right. Yeah. I mean, this is not a, this is no <laughs> hat trick or no yes, this, magic this, trick. <laughs> All summer long, um, as long as it's a sunny day, I do not turn on my a stove or, or oven in the kitchen. And um, last summer was hard. We had a really cold and wet June. And uh, so I didn't really get rolling with the solar cooking until July, but the, the summer before, I really never turned on my indoor stove or oven, never, <laughs> never. Um, and I just wanna comment, Mark Skimmler, is his sister is a friend of mine, um, ah. Trina. She lives in Kentucky too. And she, with her family, they raised two boys. The boys are almost launched. They have cooked for years with a solar cooker. So I'm, I'm tickled that you found Mark. Um, well, so, hey, you know, that necklace, what's the deal with that necklace? <laughs> so thank you for asking, Luther. So this necklace is my um, you can't see, but it's a little heart with a, a fireplace in the, and on the back, it says Betty Crocker homemaker of tomorrow. <laughs> so I won this award in high school, in high school, I was the Betty Crocker homemaker of tomorrow. But in those days, 
I had no idea that that meant that I would be a solar cooking evangelist. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the roots are are uh, going way back then with this uh, with your cooking. Well, so what's what's the future? What's your 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 hopes for your ambitions for solar cooking yourself and at large? Uh, so that's a great question. Thank you for that. Um, so of course, a solar cooker in every backyard. <laughs> That's always been my thing. But um, so what I wanna see is when I get the flyer from my big box store with these grills, I wanna see a solar cooker next to it. When I walk into Home Depot and uh, look at their aisle of grotesque <laughs> grills up to $6,000, I'd like to see um, some solar cookers in there, starting with, um, I'll tell you which one I I love, a high-end solar cooker, the Sun Taste from Portugal. Beautiful, beautiful cooker. What is not to appeal to people about that? If you put one of those next to a grill, why would you buy a grill when for $400 or $500, you could have a beautiful cork Sun Taste solar cooker from Portugal? And by the way, I know that uh, Nuno, um, the guy there, um, represented those at the Inspired Home Show in Chicago this year in February or, or March. Yay, you go. So I, I'd like to see that. Um, I would like to see every summer, it seems like the New York Times cooking section does um, an article about what to do when it's too hot to cook. <clears throat> so my ambition is someday you will see why don't you cook in a solar cooker and there'll be solar cooker recipes. Um, and I'd like to see, so um, there is a campaign called electric vehicles are normal now. And I'd like to see solar cookers follow the same path. So electric vehicles are normal now, so are solar cookers. Maybe the electric vehicles are the, the leading indicator and the cookers, maybe they're a lagging indicator as far as uh, people getting uh, going green, uh, but hopefully the lag will be closed. And uh, your book, I think, will help bridge that gap. Uh, I, I, I'm i looking forward to getting the, co getting the actual uh, copy of it. Uh, I have ordered it. Uh, oh, and it's, yeah, and what is it, slowcooksolar.com? Yes, so my website is up and um, especially Sharon, I'd love it if you went on there because your cooker is is on there. I have a whole page called gear with listing my favorite um, box and panel cookers with links to your website. So please share and go on there and check check that out. Um, yes, yeah, slowcooksolar.com. It's live. It's up. It's a beautiful site and you can pre order the book. The book is um, uh, formally available and released on Earth Day, which is a week from today, but it's available for pre-order on Amazon, um, bookshop.com, Barnes and Noble, and probably a lot of other places online. I've already uh, pre-ordered mine, so uh, and they say it's going to ship on Earth Day. Is that right? Is it that's already it's, uh, out, out of the printers and onto the trucks? Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, well, I can't think of anything else uh, to ask. I mean, I will, but. <laughs> I should mention that um, after after the this talk today, I'm going over to the uh, Green Living Expo at our local fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. So, and I have a t uh, half a table there in the renter's corner there they've given me. And the Green Living Expo is, it's the first year that my town, Corvallis, Oregon has done such a thing. They're gonna be featuring electric vehicles and all the ways to electrify your home. And they let me in there, so yahoo. All right. Okay, well everyone, you can uh, you should be able to unmute now and, uh, and turn on your cameras and uh, ask any questions for Lorraine.